you can tell I'm pretty sweaty because it's hot out um, this is what a restoration looks like and uh, this mess is driving me crazy but what I've been working on and I haven't filmed it just because I wanted to get three of the cylinders done and then I'll show you the fourth but I installed the sleeves in the block and I basically used my puller as a installation tool so i've got it set up with the block upside down and the cup is mounted on the top side of the sleeve and i've got a little bit of lubricant on the outside of the sleeve not much just a little to help it uh, slide into the block but essentially i'm just gonna pull the sleeve in so uh, the first three went pretty easily um some people put them in the freezer overnight when they install them to help them shrink down, but I just pulled them in and they pulled pretty easily. So it's better to do it with a puller than it is to drive them down with a hammer and a wood block just because you can create a lot of dimpling and stuff in the sidewalls of the cylinder sleeves. Um, not so much an issue when you have wet sleeves, but this is a dry sleeve, so they're a lot thinner wall than a, than a wet sleeve. So that's why I opted to use the puller. Um, also, the top ridge where it seats into the block is very fragile. So if you're beating on this, you're gonna, there's a good chance you'll break it. So you don't want that to happen. That's why I also chose to use the sleeve puller to install them. Uh, I wanted to show you really quick the pistons that are going to be going in it. They are a high dome piston. So aluminum pistons, brand new. They'll be going in it to replace the flat top pistons, which are all still on the rods. So I'll have to take all those off and then install the new pistons on the rods and the new bearings in the rods and the new bearings in the mains. And then we should be able to put the camshaft and crankshaft in. Well, no, I take that back. I still have to clean the uh, the front timing cover before we can put the, the camshaft in. So that'd be this front plate here. So I got to clean that up before we can install that. But everything is going to start going together here. So... Let me set the camera up and we'll pull this last sleeve down in. Hopefully you guys can see down in there. I don't know, probably not. I gotta find a place to put my my tools here. I think you can see. So as you can see, it's pulling pretty easily, but it's better to use even pressure than, than to just bang them down in there. It also ensures that you're pulling them in straight as well. You're not putting them in crooked and causing even more problems of dimpling the side walls of the, of the sleeve. I 
just pull it till it's lightly seated. Double check here. Right about level. So that sleeve is good. All right, so all our sleeves are in. Let me disassemble this puller and we'll flip the block upright. We'll start uh, swapping pistons on the rods and then we can install the pistons and rods. So we'll go from there. Stay tuned. All right, guys, I got three of the four pistons and rods set up, but I wanted to do the last one on camera so you guys could kind of follow along here. I did get all new um, lock tabs for the connecting rod bolts. So, I'm also going to put all this, this old stuff together so that if anybody wants it, you know, we can maybe work something out to where, you know, the money from the old stuff could go further towards the project. So, you know, I'm talking like the full set of sleeves and pistons and the old 30,000 thunder bearings. I don't know, maybe it's got to have some value, I would think, but maybe not. Now one thing about opening these bearing packs, always cut on the back side of the bearing, never cut across the front because if you nick that bearing surface with your razor blade, then you'll have a you'll have a nice little score in the in the bearing surface and we don't need that. So also, you should have yourself a set of brass punches. I don't have that, so I have to be very careful in removing the old bearings. Let's make sure there's no grit or anything in there. When we install the new bearing and there's a little tab I don't know if you can see that but there's a little tab right here that gets aligned with a notch in the connecting rod as well as as well as in the, the connecting rod cap so you want to put it down in place to where both sides are about even. And there we go. Bearings installed. Flip it over, we'll do the piston. We'll grab the new piston. Remove the wrist pin clip. And I usually just take a socket on an extension that is a little bit smaller than the than the uh, wrist pin. Old 
pistons off. Clean out the journal. Now there is a bushing inside these. But every one that I've done so far, the bushing's been fine. Now these new pistons are marked. It says front with an arrow. So you gotta make sure you put that towards the front of the motor. So there we have it. New piston, new bearing on the rod. Very, very, very little play in that wrist pin, which is good. And now we can do the connecting rod cap. Here's the new bearing. Oop. Going the wrong way, see? Helps to pay attention. Just like that. And there is an oil hole here that comes through so just like that There's the whole assembly right there. So from here, I think we're going to do the main bearings and caps. And then uh, I think we can put the crankshaft in. So let me get set up for that and we'll keep moving. Well, we've got all the main bearings in. So main, main, and main. We've got all the new sleeves in. And I've got old t-shirts in here to protect everything from going down inside there. Because I was working on cleaning up the gasket surfaces, getting all the old gasket off. So I'm not extremely concerned about dust and dirt because I can just blow it out with the air compressor. I know a lot of guys are going to freak out because I didn't clean the surfaces prior to putting the new bearings in. But you know what? At least this way I can just blow everything out. So should be good to go but i got halfway through cleaning the valve tappet cover or the the lifter block cover and this old girl finally crapped out on me i think i paid like 14.99 for it at menards on sale and uh it's seen a lot of road but it uh pretty much started on fire so the motors burnt up on it there was smoke coming out everywhere it still stinks like heck in here so I'm going to have to um, go get a new angle grinder and then uh, continue cleaning this thing off before I start putting the crankshaft and pistons and rods in it. But we've, uh, we've started to make a, a good amount of progress. So from here, it's just a matter of putting things back in and then cleaning things up as we go. So 
let's uh, run to the store, get a new angle grinder, and uh, keep on moving. Okay, guys, we did a lot of uh, cleaning of parts here. I spent a lot of time with the new angle grinder cleaning all these parts here, minus the air cleaner. So I got the battery, battery tray brackets, front engine mount. This is the idler gear for the crank and cam and governor and uh, magneto drive. This is the magneto drive itself, the oil filter housing. This is the uh, throttle linkage pivot or mount, I guess you could call it. This is your rear engine plate. I guess you could call it a gap guard. It goes on the bottom of the engine plate, crankshaft, pulley. And your rear engine plate and your front engine plate and the oil pan. I also put some assembly lube in the mains so that we can drop the crankshaft in. So let's go ahead and do that right now. I'll go ahead and torque this down. I believe it's 75 foot-pounds for the mains and 45 for the rods, I want to say, but I'll double check and get back to you. All right, I've got the crank installed, and before I start going on the, uh, the uh, pistons and rods, I want to point something out, okay? The main bearings on an H have, and an M, have what they call safety wire. It goes through the main bearing bolts and the way you want to orientate or loop this through is so that the let me how can I explain this so that the wire is pulling the bolt tight so it doesn't back out you don't want the wire basically the ends that you twist together you want them to both be pulling on the bolt in a in a fashion that's going to tighten it so you don't want it to pull it in a fashion that's going to loosen the bolt. So for instance, my wire nut or my wire knot is here where it's all twisted together and it's pulling from the side of the bolt that's going to tighten the bolt. And the same goes on this bolt. It's pulling from this side which tightens the bolt. And I've got that on all three of them here. So that's uh that's how you install safety wire. Now Let's flip this thing over and start putting the pistons in. All right, we've got all the pistons ready to get the ring compressor on. So let's go ahead and I'll see if I can get anything to balance here. I don't know how well that's going to work, but we'll try it.
There's one. I always use the rubber handle side of the hammer to uh, to drive them down in. That one is right on the right on the crankshaft. Just like that, they're all in. Let's flip it over and start tightening them down. All right guys, we've got the rods torqued to 40 foot-pounds, the mains to 75, and the head gets torqued to 70. So there's your torque specs for you. Now I'm gonna go through and bend these keeper tabs up for the uh, connecting rod bolts. And then I think I'm gonna call it a day because I've been at, been at this all morning and all afternoon, so getting kind of worn down, but uh, we got a lot done. We got a lot of stuff cleaned up. Uh, we still got some stuff to go here. As far as cleaning up, we got to do the fan blade water pump, but I'm going to take that apart and do the, the seals in it and repack it. I got to take the thermostat housing apart, put the new thermostat in it. But um, from here, it's just a matter of getting everything together so slowly but surely we'll get it all back together and running and then it's time for paint so anyways i'm gonna bend those tabs i'm gonna cover this thing up clean up the garage so my wife doesn't trip over everything and then i'm going in the house to cool off so as always thanks for watching thanks for wrenching with me and uh till next time